Bradley Moorwood, meeting the clinicians. The fact recants himself, divests reality, stands alone, naked, before the doctors, the students, does not shake or remember, suggests a future, waits for them to query their shock at a monument for a child, feels the cool, clean hospital air on his hairless chest, feels the cool, clean metal table near his hips, the polished floor against his feet. He knows they will smoke cigars. He knows they will ask what he's been doing. The masker asking the students what they know, what to ask. Do you play? Feel pain? Can you smile for us? Are we doing the right thing? Have we done the right thing? Did we need to cut, saw, cauterize, hammer you together again, chart you out? He feels the cold table against his back. How far does it go this way? Does it hurt to twist? We want to compare it to your good side. We want to graph it to your past, intermingle with your bones, so be soothed by our manipulations. We will father you through puberty, then scatter your records to the winds. And there he lies under the bright lights, caressed, undressed, understood. Beauty's strife. Angry that beauty fades, that flowers wilt, dawn decays, that children grow to leave, that sex and friendship have their day. Will the seasons come and go, the rivers dry and overflow? Angry that the love you know is like a shadow or the snow. The chimp. What if a chimp dropped his playthings and stared past animal eyes as if through walls, as when that first thought came of wheel or fire, then gropingly began to play again, though still beset with distant looks at clumsy hands? Though nothing else would come of it, would one see just a primate fail at the expected or stare off chartless heights, a genius chimp? Vigilance. When Mussolini comes, he won't ask you what you think of your dreams. When Hitler rides, he will not laugh at absurd poems. When Stalin drones, he won't allow you to be honest, even with yourself. You will be encouraged to put your freedom of thought with your poetry files. You will be ordered to make a particular kind of sense. When Mao knocks, your visions will be covered with his portraits. Pilgrimage. We leave all sins behind in the pilgrimage. We know it's not our land anymore. We cross the sea of dangers, storms of unkindness and conflict, thirsts of unquenchable days, starvings of empty horizons, missing things, missing things we don't understand. We stare at the surface of our sea. Our survival reddens there. The wave lap turns to water. It is water that we need, the wave we fear, and the lime of tender lips on the steady deck we need. Keep watch. There's no turning back. We sailed straight out for weeks, thrown ourselves into the blue arms of a kindly stranger. 
our unbelief will crash on the rocks. Our lack of faith will drown in foamy chaos. Our hopelessness will starve. And we will walk the shore as we have left. The reason why I write poetry is because I'm uh, trying to learn about myself and about the world, basically. I'm very curious. I probably use it as a tool. I like poetry events because people get up there and express what's happening in their lives and in their minds. Some of my poetry is online. Some of it is recorded. You can uh, listen to uh, the CD called The Beam, B-E-A-M, online. Uh, and I go to a lot of open mics in Tampa Bay, which I've been doing since about 1991. I am concerned about freedom of thought. And right now, we have in this society a pretty good level of freedom of thought. And we ought to keep our minds, our, our eyes on that, preserving that.